Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, Understanding the Quran. In it, in this segment, we're looking at Surah Al Waqi'ah, the 56th chapter of the Quran. Allah goes on to describe what is happening there in paradise for those who are foremost. In the previous verse, we looked at the immortal boys who would circulate among the people of paradise, serving them with cups, jugs, glasses of flowing wine. We discussed the whole issue of wine being forbidden in this life. Actually, we're, that's the segment we focused on. And the issue of wine being allowed in the next, we actually didn't get to that. That issue relates to the further description which Allah gives of the wine when he said in verse 19 <laughs> which will neither cause headache nor intoxication. So there Allah points out the main evils which come from the drinking of wine. You know, that it causes headache, the person wakes up in the morning with, you know, serious headache, etc. And that's if they've drunk a lot, of course, and most people end up drinking a lot. And the other harm is that of intoxication, where a person loses control of his or her senses. They're not aware of what is going on around them as they actually are. And as a result, a lot of harm comes. A lot of harm comes in this society from intoxication. Whereas in the paradise, the wine of paradise is without these ill effects. So it is whatever is good of wine, that is what is preserved and enhanced beyond our capacity to understand. Because though, you know, Allah says here, it is flowing wine which don't give you headaches or and they don't make you intoxicated. At the same time, Prophet Muhammad had said that the things of paradise no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, nor has it crossed the mind of anyone. So even though Allah describes the wine in simple terms as not causing headaches and not giving intoxication, the real essence of that wine is something beyond us. We know that wine, obviously there's an element of goodness in it, that it tastes good to a certain degree, otherwise people wouldn't drink it. But the harm which comes makes that good taste useless. In paradise, all of the harm is removed. Only whatever was good in it is preserved. Obviously, the need to preserve help in digestion we don't need because there is no digestive process in paradise. People will not be going to the toilet. You know, so it's a whole different way of life. So we don't need that aspect. Furthermore, the benefit that the doctors say that it helps reduce the chances of heart attack, we don't have to worry about heart attacks. There will be no heart attacks in paradise. Because people will not age. So these are no longer relevant. Then what remains? Whatever is good from its taste, something pleasurable, this Allah enhances beyond our capacity to understand. And He has made this permissible. So the question that was raised earlier and that we're looking at now, why Allah forbade wine on earth and permitted in paradise. Obviously, because the harm in this world far outweighs any good. Whereas in paradise, all of the harm is removed. It is only good. So we can understand here why it is permissible in paradise and not permissible in this life. Now, there's another element that by Allah telling us that we'll have it in paradise. He's saying you don't have to have it here. Don't feel, because this is a part of the things of the people of this world, 
that they feel that if we don't get this here, we've lost. This life is all there is. So whatever pleasures you can experience, experience them. Because tomorrow you will die and it's all over. Well, Allah tells us, no, it's not like that. If you are righteous in this life, you will continue to experience goodness, pleasure in the next. And the pleasure of the next life is far greater than any pleasure in this life. This is the point. This is the, this is the essence of the message. So for the believers, they give up wine in this life. And they don't feel the loss because they know that in, in giving it up, this is pleasing to Allah, Allah accepts their good deeds and gives them paradise. And what they will get in the next life far outstrips whatever could be gotten in this life. So it represents a kind of confidence booster for the believers that you don't need to worry. Nothing escapes you. Nothing that is good. Not a single thing in this world, in the whole of our existence, which is good, the believer misses. He will not lose out, he will not miss out on anything. He may appear to miss out on it in this life because he's abandoned it, because Allah has declared it to be forbidden. But whatever was good in it, he will get many times over in the next life. So there is no loss. We're not losing. We're not missing out. If we're patient and we stick with the right path, following God's instructions, then whatever good is here in this world, we will get it many, many times over. Then Allah goes on to describe further some of the other foods of paradise. He spoke about the wine here. Then he goes on to speak about the fruit and the birds of paradise. He says there in verses 20 and 21, وَفَاكِهَةٍ مِّمَّا يَتَخَيَّرُونَ وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِّمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ And with fruit that they may choose, and the flesh of birds which they desire. So Allah speaks here about First, the fruit. You know, and of course, again, this is something that we all love. Well, he has not forbidden fruit in this life. But even this, which is pleasurable to us, we like the fruits. Allah gives us fruits of far greater pleasure in the life to come. And they will be of our choice, meaning that there are fruits in this world that maybe we'll never taste. It's their fruits all over the face of this earth. Many, 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 many varieties. Most people never really taste, you know, except a very small portion of them. Now, do we miss out on anything of this in the next life? No. Whatever is there, whatever we desire, we will get in the next life. And this is very important because when the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, told us that this life is a prison for the believer and paradise for the disbeliever. He's telling us that by restricting ourselves in this life, it may appear as a prison. We're restricted. But the next life we get paradise. Whereas for those who have disbelieved, this life will be their paradise. They will enjoy, etc., etc. But the life is so short. When a person dies, the whole of his life will just flash in front of him. It will seem like he was only here for the blinking of an eye. <laughs> the question that was raised earlier and that we're looking at now, why Allah forbade wine on earth and permitted in paradise? Obviously, because the harm in this world far outweighs any good. Whereas in paradise, all of the harm is removed. It is only good. So we can understand here why it is permissible in paradise and not permissible in this life. Now, there's another element that by Allah telling us that we'll have it in paradise. He's saying you don't have to have it here. Don't feel, because this is a part of the things of the people of this world, that they feel that 
if we don't get this here, we've lost. This life is all there is. So whatever pleasures you can experience, experience them. Because tomorrow you will die and it's all over. Well, Allah tells us, no, it's not like that. If you are righteous in this life, you will continue to experience goodness, pleasure in the next. And the pleasure of the next life is far greater than any pleasure in this life. This is the point. This is the, this is the essence of the message. So for the believers, they give up wine in this life. And they don't feel the loss because they know that in, in giving it up, this is pleasing to Allah, Allah accepts their good deeds and gives them paradise. And what they will get in the next life far outstrips whatever could be gotten in this life. So it represents a kind of confidence booster for the believers that you don't need to worry. Nothing escapes you. Nothing that is good. Not a single thing in this world, in the whole of our existence, which is good, the believer misses. He will not lose out, he will not miss out on anything. He may appear to miss out on it in this life because he's abandoned it, because Allah has declared it to be forbidden. But whatever was good in it, he will get many times over in the next life. So there is no loss. We're not losing. We're not missing out. If we're patient and we stick with the right path, following God's instructions, then whatever good is here in this world, we will get it many, many times over. Then Allah goes on to describe further some of the other foods of paradise. He spoke about the wine here. Then he goes on to speak about the fruit and the birds of paradise. He says there in verses 20 and 21, and with fruit that they may choose, and the flesh of birds which they desire. So Allah speaks here about First, the fruit. You know, and of course, again, this is something that we all love. Well, he has not forbidden fruit in this life. But even this, which is pleasurable to us, we like the fruits. Allah gives us fruits of far greater pleasure in the life to come. And they will be of our choice, meaning that there are fruits in this world that maybe we'll never taste. It's their fruits all over the face of this earth. Many, 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 many varieties. Most people never really taste, you know, except a very small portion of them. Now, do we miss out on anything of this in the next life? No. Whatever is there, whatever we desire, we will get in the next life. And this is very important because when the Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, told us that this life is a prison for the believer and paradise for the disbeliever. He's telling us that by restricting ourselves in this life, it may appear as a prison. We're restricted. But the next life we get paradise. Whereas for those who have disbelieved, this life will be their paradise. They will enjoy, etc., etc. But the life is so short. When a person dies, the whole of his life will just flash in front of him. It will seem like he was only here for the blinking of an eye, for a second. This life will seem like a second in relationship to the life to come. So for us to treat this life like a prison, in other words, we have limited ourselves. Not that we don't have any pleasure, we don't get any good, or no but that we have limited ourselves to a particular area. It is in fact the vast area of this life. Again, when people think of the prison, they think of a small prison, only a little area that you can walk around in. But in fact, the prison is huge. What is outside the prison, which is forbidden, is actually a small amount. But still relative to the individual who values his freedom, 
is right to choose, then it is a form of prison. So for the believer, giving up that small area of the forbidden, the disliked, this area is not difficult for him or her to do because they know that whatever good there is in it, they will get better than it in the next life. Paradise of the next life is the one to strive for, not what appears to us to be paradise in this life. Now there is a narration where Allah, through revelation, informed the Prophet Muhammad something about the foods of this life. Because we mention first and foremost the fruit that they had to choose, but then Allah went on to say the flesh of birds which they desire, you know, the birds, we eat chickens, it's a form of birds, popular flesh. You know, people go hunting and shoot down certain birds and their flesh is also very tasty. Now, Allah goes on to tell us in the life to come about the animals that they, in one narration found in the Musnad of Ahmed, which is authentic, he said the birds of paradise are like long-necked camels that graze in the trees of paradise. Abu Bakr's companion had said, O Messenger of Allah, surely these birds must be wonderful. And the Messenger said, those who eat them are more wonderful. And he repeated this statement three times. Those who get it, who get to eat of the birds of paradise, they will be even more wonderful than the birds. And he went on to say, and I hope that you will be among those who eat from them. In another narration, found in also Musnad Ahmed, Thabit had said that Anas, the companion of the Prophet Muhammad who was his personal servant, a young man who was given as a child by his mother to serve the Prophet Muhammad he said that the Prophet used to love dreams. He would ask people about their dreams. They would come to him and ask him about their dreams. Once a woman came to him and said, O Messenger of Allah, I had a dream that I was taken out of Medina and entered paradise. I heard noise because of which paradise wept. I looked and found so and so, so and so, and she mentioned the names of 12 men whom the Prophet ﷺ had sent on a military expedition. They were later brought in paradise in the dream with their wounds bleeding. And it was said to them, take them to the river of Baydach. They were taken to that river and submerged in it and their faces turned as radiant as the full moon. They were brought a plate made of gold containing green dates. They ate as much of the green dates as they wanted. And whenever they turned that plate around, they would eat from the fruit it contained as much as they wanted. And I, the woman said, ate with them. Later on, that army sent an emissary to convey the news of the battle. And he said that so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so had died, mentioning the names of 12 men who were mentioned in the dream. So Allah's Messenger called the woman and asked her again to tell her story, and she did. This hadith represents what we call a true dream where Allah reveals something of the future to human beings. People in different parts of the world experience it. It's a part of the sign which Allah has left amongst us that He is in fact our God. Because this is something which a human being cannot do for himself. You could want to have a true dream as much as you wish. You could desire it. You could read about it. You could ask others to help you get it and you can't get it. It is only given by Allah. And it is what remains of revelation and will remain until the last day. So true dreams, of course, we don't know what are true dreams until they occur. Even if a person has one true dream tonight, he or she cannot assume 
that the next week, if they have another dream, which they feel seems so vivid, etc., etc., they say, this must be a true dream. No. We do not know what are true dreams until they occur. And the principle of interpretation of dreams, which are mentioned here in the Hadith, it was the practice of the Prophet ﷺ to interpret people's dreams. But of course, these were all true dreams or good dreams. He would speak on them. Whereas the dreams which involve some kind of corruption or fearful dreams or whatever, when they, whenever they came to the Prophet with them, he would tell them, don't speak on it. It's only Satan playing with your mind. And he, in fact, divided dreams into three categories. Good dreams, which involve the true dreams, as well as encouraging dreams. Then the second category he called satanic dreams, where Satan, the satanic forces, the evil jinn, will come into our minds and put thoughts and ideas which we wake up with or we experience in our dreams. And the third category was just the ramblings of the mind. As the human mind absorbs things during the day, it is regurgitated in the mind during the night in sleep. So this area of dreams is not an area which every, each and every person should just jump into and be ready to make interpretations. No. This is from Allah, and the understanding should be drawn from the explanations given by the Messenger of Allah and from the Quranic verses, etc., etc., but it was the Prophet's practice, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to interpret dreams. And so, it is in fact a part of Islamic practice. With that, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, where we've been looking at those who are foremost and what they will receive in the life to come. We hope that you will continue to follow us in our various segments of our program here on Surah Al-Waqi'ah, chapter 56 of the Quran in our coming episodes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.